hello there how's it going so in this video i'm going to show you how you can work with the spark ui basically how you can know uh what what is going on with your job on spark ui so i'm just going to do a bit of demonstration in another video i'll be doing more demonstrations regarding spark ui so first of all um i have a an organization data here it's 100 records so i'm reading it within the cell class so i've called a show method so the data looks like this uh, right now we can access the spark ui so if we go to the uh, browser and type uh, um, localhost 4040 it's going to show us nothing um, so in order to access the spark ui we have to use the systems dot in dot read and from there we can say spark session dot stop by the way i already defined the spark session in here so i'm just importing it within my class here so now if i run this code again okay now you can see the Spark session is still alive. So I can go to the browser and type, um, okay, now it's alive. So I can refresh. Um, so you can see here in the UI, this is the job, and this is the job ID zero, and this is the job ID one. Uh, so in line number, uh, seven so you can see this description here csv at working spark ui this is our class name and it's saying line number seven what we are doing is basically scanning the um packet uh, the csv file so as you can see here we are reading the csv file in line number seven and in line number eight what we are doing is actually calling a dot show method which is an action. So if I click this uh, description, right, it's going to take us to the uh, completed stage. This is the stage ID, which is one, and this is the description. And if you click this one again, right, it will take you to this uh, metrics page, right? You can see the percentile uh, media and so on. And you can see, the um, executor uh, that basically execute the task and here it says the uh, driver here executor id is driver and the host is basically my computer and the locality level is process local we have the different type of uh, uh, locality level we have no level we have process local and some other level is spark you are right? in spark i mean uh, you can also check the dark visualization here. So the first step is basically to scan the CSV file. If it's a parquet file, it will say scan parquet or it says CSV file. So it's saying scan CSV file. Also, you can check the SQL of this um, um, job. So if I go back a bit, right? So it's saying the associated SQL query is one. So if you go to the SQL here and you see the one here, the job ID one. So if you click this one, so here, what we're doing here is uh, we are scanning the CSV file, right? And then after this uh, scan, we call it the show, right? Um, collect limits currently means 21 so you can see the detail of this um, query here these are basically the column um, organization uh, name websites country description and so on and um, so apart from this another um, important thing i want to show you is you can see here the duration how long this a uh, job is taking right so initially right here it's taking 0 0.5 second and here it's saying taking 0 0.1 second um I, 
I want to show you the storage area. Right now, there is nothing in the storage, but the, the storage, uh, basically, if when you persist a an RDD to Spark memory, those RDD will be basically uh, uh, appear in the storage if you persist or checkpoint the RDD. So let's go ahead and do that. So say for example, I say before I use the dot show method by I say df1. Okay, let me go persist here. So basically, I scan the CSV, then persist it. And when you persist in RDD, you when you persist the data frame, you need to call an action in order for the data frame to be persist into memory. If an action is not called, that data frame will not be persist into the memory. So now let's save this one and run again. Okay, now we have uh, make, made a change in the code. Now let's see what is going on in the UI. So if I refresh this UI again, now you can see we we have something in the storage, right? So the, the data frame has been persisted into memory. Now the, the size of the data in memory is 7.6 kilobytes, right? So that is what happened and it's being cached into one partition, right? So if you click this one now and you you will you will get to this page and it's showing that the host is my basically my local machine which is this one and the unheap memory is 7.6 kilobytes of data and uh, so the, the the remaining um the many size of bytes is uh, one point about two gigabytes right so um so if you go down here you see the the block name, which is how did it text underscore 13 underscore zero. That is how it's identified the uh, how did it that has been persisted in, into memory when you try to use that uh, data frame in and in subsequent uh, um, transformation. So, um, so an, another thing is um, if you have more than one uh, host, um you you can so here it's showing a part one partition you can do a partition to make sure that the this how did they, um is distributed across all your um, host or all your executors basically my my computer is acting as my executor now but if you are using the cluster mode, like maybe in database, you have an option to use a uh, cluster, right? So you will be provisioned with a uh, different number of executors, you know, according to your need, right? So you can repartition your RTD across all the uh, executors. It may be 60 partitions or across, uh, across all your executors. So it depends, right? So another thing is uh, local checkpoints, right? Um, but I'm not going to show that one in this video just to make uh, things uh, uh, very short, right? Um, in the next video, I'll be talking more about um, uh, the Spark UI and what is going on and uh, maybe how to improve performance training in some cases. Right. So yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button and leave a comment. Have a lovely day and goodbye.